Iran. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, in light of the IAEA report, what you think needs to happen now in terms of sanctions with Iran? I think one of the first things that we need to do before we get to sanctions is we need to make sure we're clear in our message that Iran is not just an Israeli problem or a U.S. problem, it's a world problem, and a nuclear Iran is just not acceptable to the world. We need to state that very clearly, very succinctly. The second thing that I think is important that we do is after stating that with clarity, we need to make sure that we have sanctions that speak with equal clarity, that is, sanctions that are going to actually work and stop Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. They may involve the refining of their petroleum products or perhaps their sale of petroleum problems, maybe with their banking systems, but sanctions that are going to have enough teeth in them to make sure that this doesn't happen to the world. And the third thing is I think it's important we not take any options off the table. Iran needs to have a clear message from the world that a nuclear Iran is not acceptable to the world community. Okay, if you could say your position on the U.S. decision to cut UNESCO funding after the UNESCO vote to accept Palestine as a state, and in general, what do you think of continued U.S. funding of the U.N.? Well, I think most people in the United States Congress were supportive of the decision to cut funding to the United Nations once they supported uh, a um, unilateral Palestinian state. I think the second thing that you'll find is that many people in Congress actually would support a reduction in funding to the UN until we have a full accounting of one where those dollars are going and secondly what they're being utilized for. Yes. I think President Obama's use of the um, return to the 1967 lines for Israel was um, difficult in several respects. I think the first and most important thing is that we need to be very, very clear on our position in terms of the United States position on on Israel. And that was a very confusing statement because the President stated one thing and then several weeks came back and tried to clarify his position. So first of all, just from a clarity point of view, it was wrong. But secondly, from a substance point of view, it was absolutely wrong. I don't see how Israel can possibly return to the 67 lines and hope to defend this country and have the security that they need. And I think it would be absolutely wrong for the United States to try to dictate that to um, the Israeli government or to this country uh, as, as a whole. Okay, do you think that the U.S. should be pushing Israel to free settlement construction? I don't think the U.S. should be dictating to the Israeli government what it should be doing in terms of cities, villages, communities that it has throughout its own landscape. I think it's very important when you actually go and visit those areas, you find out that settlement is even a misnomer, that we're talking about cities, towns, families, communities. And I think it's important that we let those cities and communities work out some of their problems themselves without having to dictate it from a, uh, another country somewhere in another part of the world. Would you support moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem? Well, first of all, I think that's a decision that should be made by the Israeli people and the Israeli government. Uh, nobody in the United States would think that any other country in the world should tell us where we should put our capital. I don't think that we should tell the people of Israel where they should put their capital. But once the people of Israel have decided, Jerusalem should be their capital. I think it's important that our embassy should be in their capital, and I would support that move.